Hello, this is Ben with Studio on the Lake. Hey, this is uh, number 10 in the watercolor series. And this one, I'm going to, uh, this, this is the first of three. I'm going to do this guy three times. And I'm going to do it on uh, some rough paper. This is Arches, uh, rough 140 pound. And here is the, uh, the green, the regular um, Arches paper. And then we're going to do it again on uh, not arches paper, but a uh, hot press. So you got two cold press, one hot press, and the difference in those uh, goes from the orange there would be a rough texture to the green, which is a regular texture. And then the hot press has uh, almost no texture whatsoever. And uh, we'll talk about that when we get uh, to those. But the first one I'm going to do is with the orange which is the rougher and it's 140 pound and it's arches for some reason you can't find arches at uh, uh, the two big art stores Michaels and uh, Hobby Lobby uh, all they have is the uh, cheaper paper and you'll you'll like the more expensive paper a little bit better than you, you will the cheap paper uh, just for the way the paint and the pigments flow so we're putting it down to a board it's just standard uh, masking tape and I take that tape and I, I put it on my jeans before I, I take a piece and tear it off put it on my jeans and then put it on there and it allows you to tear it off it doesn't tear little chunks out of it uh, it kind of dulls down the holding on that this is uh, Jordy's palette that uh, if you've been following if not get it go back about 10 videos and uh, we're, I'm painting with that same palette so I got three brushes out there. You can see I had a nondescript. Uh, they're just watercolor cheap brushes in a pack. A flat, a little round, and then I have a, a detail, a rigger, is that smaller one there. This is going to be, uh, the better part of this is going to be done uh, dry on wet. I'll explain to you, uh, or I'll mention when I'm not painting uh, when I'm doing the, there's a little bit of wet on wet in this. You can see barely in the background, since I'm doing three of them there, uh, there is a pattern on here. It's done in pencil and it's very light. You can almost not see it uh, in that. And this was a little bit of uh, Prussian blue with a little bit of Payne's gray mixed into it doing the beak. And again, this is being done uh, dry. So the paint uh, is wet, it's kind of a medium consistency paint. And you can see then there I'm starting to drop in some color, a little bit of uh, red, quinactinone red, I believe this is what that is. I'm going to run a lot of this at two times the speed. You don't need to see me uh, messing around, mixing colors in between. And this is a little different uh, camera setup. I went away from the phone. I had done uh, probably two or three different uh, paintings uh, with my using my old phone as a uh, recording device. And for some reason, the videos were corrupted on it. It just got annoying. It's it's annoying to paint for an hour or two doing a, a video and then uh, not be able to pull the video down. So I went back to the Canon 70D, and you can see I'm just dropping a red in here. It looks like pigs in space but there you can actually see a little bit of the outline uh, in pencil below now the thing about the the texture on this paper you can see as I'm uh, scrubbing kind of the side of the brush there I'm letting the texture of the paper do a little bit of the work and when we go to the regular this is rough when we go to the regular one which will be the second one and then finally the last one will be the hot press which is really smooth um, and you won't see quite as much paper texture in there. And then I'll stop using the side of my brush and rubbing it over the paper. Uh, I'll just paint straight on through. This is a little bit of, there's a little bit of wet on wet going here. You can see I'm touching, allowing the yellow to, to uh, bleed back into the green. I'm staying purposely away from the eye. And you can see how it's starting to fade down in there, dropping a little bit of purple. Uh, in or magenta as the case may be and I'm, I'm going to flip back and forth so you can see a little bit of what I'm doing with the palette there um, 
and then I'll, I'll do some close-up stuff with the paper. So I'm trying to use uh, bolder strokes here. I'm not actually painting in any particular section. I'm working a bunch of uh, different portions of this. You can see right now I'm putting a little water mix in there and I'm also softening up the top edge of a couple of those of the red. And here you can see I'm, I'm softening the top edge and the way I'm doing that is I'm just using a little bit of water and I'm scrubbing it with the brush and, and letting it kind of diffuse to give me a softer edge in there. And I'm doing the same thing here. Now here I want to take a, I want to lift a little highlight out so I've just got water and I'm working right below his beak there and I'm just scrubbing that very lightly and then I'll take a paper towel and I'll dab that out of there and that gives me a real nice um, light highlight where the light would be coming from. So you can see uh, down on the purple there where the, uh, the paper is doing the work. It's leaving the white of the paper. And now it's time to start uh, putting some of these drops down into the nest. And this is a real free style, free form style. It's just kind of a hint of uh, what you got going on there. And there's a good example of how that paper works right there. You saw I used kind of the side of the flat brush there. And again, the same thing going here. And I'm letting the paper do a lot of the work there. I'm going to put some highlights in. Since that is wet, the wash is wet before that, when I put the highlights in, they tend to bleed. Uh, back down through and start to do some mixing. So here we're going to put the branch in and this is just water and you can see it's dirty water because uh, it's it's already putting a little uh, uh, a tent in there and this is going to be the nest so I'm, I'm, I'm wetting the nest in the background now we're doing some wet and wet and I'm just going to drop some colors in there and let them uh, run around and do what they need to do. You can see what the difference between the wet and the dry is as the, what happened on that branch right there. And while I got the brown, I'll just throw in a couple of random loose lines that would represent sticks and that sort of thing uh, building up in the nest. So playing with the light a little bit, now we're coming down to the bottom of the bird where the bird would be sitting in the nest. Uh, it would be a little bit darker. So I, I dr dropped some dark in there. And the colors I was using on that uh, were a little bit of blue, a little bit of red, and a touch of Payne's gray. It gives you a nice, nice dark. So here you can see where I, I panned out. Uh, there's the mixes that I'm using on the palette over on the right. And then I'm going to come back in and show you what I'm doing. So I'm dropping a little bit of blue in there. This is still a little bit wet. I haven't actually let this dry. I, I'm going to use a hair dryer. Uh, here in just a second when I get this where I want it to be and and uh, then I'll, I'll let it dry and then I'll come back in with another mix. One thing you don't want to do is keep putting uh, adding paint in here uh, and scrubbing it around you'll get a real muddy effect on that so the secret to not get that is to let it dry in between different layers and then you're working with the opaque of the watercolor. Just dropping in some uh, random highlights there. And the idea is to keep this fairly loose. dropping in some some tail feathers there and again you can see the papers doing a little bit of the work there for me and I'm just dropping in the darker values now over on the left hand side and assumably the light would be coming from the right and 
and therefore everything on the left side would be relatively in shadow. There you see the hair dryer. I've got uh, a lot of the colors uh, pretty much blocked out where I want them and I'd like them to kind of stay there and I don't want to put any color over those because uh, they'll bleed in there and turn it muddy and I don't want to mess around with it. So I want to get this dry uh, for the next layer that I'm going to put on here. And that'll keep the layers clean and it'll keep the muddy look away from the painting. So I've switched to the small rigger. And uh, now we're pretty much the form is done. And uh, one of the neat parts about painting or carving, uh, if you're just picked up on the watercolor part of this, I do run another uh, duplicate channel of this, which has to do with the wood carving. Uh, it's also called Studio on the Lake, and there's a link down uh, below. If you came over from the wood carving channel, thanks a lot for supporting this new one as we try to build it up. So I put dropped in just a little Payne's gray on the eye. I left a white highlight, and then you saw me scrubbing on the bottom part of the eye. And what I was doing was I was taking a little bit of that uh, gray paint out to give the eye a little bit of a highlight, and that makes it come uh, and give it more of a lifelike uh, look about it. So everything's dry, and now I'm going to come back in, and I'm going to do, I want to do a little softening. You saw me soften that up before, and I softened right underneath his uh, chin there where the light would be hitting, and I'm taking that out with a paper towel. So just a little bit of water on a dry brush. Scrub it back and forth a few times, and it allows you to lift this paint. Most of these paints you can lift, with the exception of a few of them, which are, are color fast but the rest of them are opaque and they will allow you to uh, almost take this back to a white. Right there you saw me drop a little bit of green on there and do in the back. That's the paper doing the work. That's the rough paper versus uh, the regular paper which will be the next one. And you can see that again as I'm drawing in uh, little sticks and random things in the uh, nest there. When I get to the end of the stroke I kind of let the brush fade away, turn it maybe a little bit to the side, and then the, uh, the paint will scrape across the paper, and the roughness of the paper uh, gives you kind of a neat, neat effect there. This one, I'm going to run this uh, little sequence here twice. But uh, you can see that I'm going back. Everything is dry. There is no wet on that. I did dry it in between. And now I'm just putting uh, color highlights in at random spots on the bird and random spots on the nest. You can see this is a wide angle. You can see the palette in that. And then uh, in just a second here, it's running at two times the speed. And in just a second, I will go ahead and run this whole sequence one more time but I will zoom in on uh, the bird and you can see the little parts and pieces uh, that I'm doing in there. I, I like the color I had on there and it seemed to be a good time to sign it. I'm going to do a little bit of splatter and some various different things in there, but right now we're just kind of, I'm kind of touching up different spots that uh, I thought needed just a little tint of color, a little bit more color. running the dark down the bottom of his uh, beak there. That's just a little bit of blue and paints gray with a touch of red or uh, magenta in that. And right now I'm kind of working a little bit with the shadow uh, underneath his chin there. Again, this portion right here, I'm going to, uh, in just a second here, you're going to see me rerun this section, and I'm going to rerun it and show you um, uh, the detail work up a little bit closer. So 
So here's here's a little bit of the splatter. I wanted to do some light splatter, and you can see that uh, as light as I did it, I did a little bit of red, and then a little bit of a darker blue in there, and that's that's all I did. And there's the blue, and I'm just doing a really light. I didn't want to overdo it. This is a point where you can overdo uh, the splatter on that. Now, same sequence. We went back in time, magic of video. And you can see I've kind of got the colors delineated where I want, and I just need to make a couple of them a little bit bolder. Everything here is is dry, and I'm just touching in uh, the highlights. When you're working with watercolor versus acrylic or oil, you're painting uh, from light to dark. And a lot of times when you're working with oils or acrylics, you'll be painting in the reverse. You will be painting the dark in first, and then you'll be painting the light over that. In, in watercolor, we try to leave a little bit of the paper showing through as a white. The purists don't use white. You're going to see me use a little bit of uh, white gouache at the end of this. But uh, by and large, I'm leaving the light elements in there, and so we're painting backwards from oil and acrylic. We're painting from light to dark and you can see right now that I'm, I'm putting in the darker elements of this and just a little a few highlights and this is that same sequence uh, up a little closer now you see how the paper is uh, leaving or the paper is sucking the paint off I'm kind of using the side of that brush and I'm, I'm switching colors I'm washing uh, the brush between colors and drying it and I've got a, a little bit drier paint on there not as watery a consistency and I'm just trying to figure out where it needs uh, little highlights and you can see I'm, I'm putting a little cerulean blue in there I kinda like that And you, you can see I really don't have a whole lot of hard, there's no hard edges in there. The bird is kind of in the background, and we're letting the light do the work. You can see underneath his chin there, where I uh, took a little bit of the color away from that. And here you can see what the paper actually does. I'm just putting a few green highlights on his head, and I'm using the side of the brush now. And I'm letting the paper suck, the, the rougher paper suck the 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 paint off of uh, the brush put working a little bit more on the shadow under the, the underside of his bill and putting a fuzzy uh, fuzzy end uh, to the bill out there and there's a, there's an example of the side of that brush and I didn't add any paint, I just took a little bit of water and there's going to be a highlight on the top of his bill there and you can see that I let the other, I'm just working scrubbing back and forth this is a point where you could you could overdo this it just needs to have hints of lines, you're not going to get any sticks particularly out of the nest you're not getting any tail feathers as you can see and you're really not getting any feathers up in the front of the bird it's just a color graduation down through there uh, giving it kind of a, uh, a freehand style A little bit more uh, Payne's Gray, bringing his uh, eyeball out just a tad bit more. And you notice I'm not painting completely around the eyeball. And now I'm going to uh, feather those edges out just a tad on his eye. So it's got a little bit of a softer uh, look around it there. So that's pretty much the same sequence. Uh, that I just showed you from afar 
and I just zoomed in a tad on that uh, and reran the same sequence so you could see all those movements that I was doing uh, before. Now here's here's where I'm putting the red on. Remember you couldn't see the red uh, spring, or, uh, splatters and you really can't see a whole lot of that here because they're just light and they're just little hints in the background. I didn't want to overdo it. You can overdo it. I, I did a little bit of red and then I, I came back and did a touch of blue and there's the blue. And I'm trying not to overdo this so uh, if it was a different bird I, I might even use some uh, uh, gouache, gouache or gouache. I can't say that either way. Anyway, I would probably put a little bit of white gouache in there and uh, make it more of a snow scene. So here's the white gouache. This, is, this would make this technically a mixed media painting. Uh, a lot of watercolorists use white gouache, a lot of them, uh, several of them in the old school. You weren't supposed to. You were supposed to be able to leave the white of that. And, and the gouache is uh, an acrylic and it's a watercolor. And you can see I'm just putting a few highlights in. And there's another way I could have done this if, if I had masked this guy out. Uh, some of those spots, they would be completely white and I would be able to take it away. So. There, he's pretty much done. He just needs uh, thrown into a frame. This is done on the rough uh, paper. This is Arches paper. It's a little bit more expensive, but it, I, I like the way that it comes out. Uh, I like the way that uh, it acts. And it is archival, so it uh, will stay there. And it is a cotton paper versus a wood pulp. And, and at some point in the future, if we get this series going, I'll do that, but uh, there's hummingbird number one. I'm going to do uh, two more, one on regular arches, 140 pound, and then one on hot press versus the cold press. So if you like this, please click like. By means, leave me a comment, and uh, thanks a lot. This has been Ben with Studio on the Lake.